Should you buy, should you sell, or should you run when it comes to the housing market, when it comes to real estate? How you guys doing? You know, it is crazy. And also there's a whole audience that probably won't even really get this. And I, I'm going to talk about this in a second. Basically, you know, something that'll make you lose all faith in our fellow millennial generation, which we're counting on to buy homes. Because a new study just found that millennials are more likely to water their house plants than to think about their finances. Yeah, let that one sink in for a minute. Not trying to sound like the grown up in the room. Sometimes somebody's got to say it. It's not getting any better either with fear of debt holding many of them back from buying a house right now with 61% of renters unable to afford to buy a home in their own city. But that could soon change. Even though the housing market is seemingly unstoppable, having increased another 17% over the past year, while inventory remains low, that's according to Redfin, Housing Wire now calls the real estate market savagely unhealthy. And Zillow predicts, predicts that the wildest home price swings still await. On top of that, now that the Federal Reserve has committed to their plan to aggressively raise those interest rates, analysts are warned that the housing market is in, an early, in its early stages, substantial downshift. While more investors are dumping stocks for cash and potentially bracing for a recession that they're concerned about. So let's talk about the five latest real estate predict predictions from analysts and experts. Why home sales are expected to drop 25%. And then finally, why millennials are so bad with their money. But first, we got to get into this. Why do, why do I talk about uh, real estate's my game? I develop, build, buy, sell. I'm a real estate broker as well as a business broker. And I have a course just for you. $40,000 I spent for the information in this course. It's yours for $99. It's on sale. It's 10% of the regular price. Check it out in the description. It's incredible. I spent $45 million making mistakes. I don't want you to make those same mistakes. I talked straight in the videos, just real language, not like over your head stuff that many professionals try and do to seem smart. That ain't me. Straight talk, straight to you. Well, with that said, let's get into this. All right, so for anyone who wants a really quick, simple summary, 60 second recap on what's been going on in the housing market, here's what you need to know. First, the March 2020 interest rate reduction allowed homeowners to lower their monthly payments while simultaneously having more purchasing powers at the same exact time, thereby driving up home prices. Because if you got lower interest rates, you could afford more home. So they were willing to pay more for the house. So they have more power. Second, the shutdown resulted in a record low number of homes on the market. And with severe reduction in supply, the leftover inventory was bid up to even higher prices. That means, you know, there's only one house to choose from and you got two buyers. What do you think is going to happen? And third, supply chain bottlenecks meant that housing supplies took longer to arrive than, than and they passed on the expense of those costs. Those were passed on to the consumer. And fourth, labor shortage is also fed into this overall cost of housing with less people available to work. They either charged more or there were just fewer homes. But this all happened at exactly the same time. And it's led to one of the hottest housing markets of all time with the highest price increase on record for both purchases and rentals. And you're like, all these things just collided and crashed into each other and now this is the market. Who would have thought this would have happened? But that could soon be a thing of the past because now that the Federal Reserve has started raising interest rates for the first time since 2018. And if you're curious what happened back then, the housing market dropped. See, after 2008's great financial crash, the Federal Reserve did something very similar to what we're seeing today. They lowered interest rates to near zero, almost nothing. And they started purchasing mortgage-backed securities because the banks, they didn't want them. They're like, we don't know what's gonna happen. So they let the feds buy it. As a way of stimulating lending, 
and getting the house market, housing market back on its feet, or at least ba basically keeping it from losing its footing. But that couldn't last indefinitely. During that process, in 2015, the Federal Reserve began raising interest rates for the first time in seven years. And in 2018, they'd increased to the highest level in a decade. Although, when they signaled for even more, more rate hikes in 2019, the market went into a full-scale panic, saying no mas, no more. By May of 2019, it was said that the Federal Reserve had ruined the stock market rally with the S&P 500 having dropped 20% from September through December in 2018. Blame it on the Fed. Although one of the less talked about aspects of the free fall, this is typical, was the impact of the real estate market. It takes time. Within six months of the stock market declining, home prices began to drop, starting to fall, and growth almost completely stalled. They stopped building. While the federal funds rate approached 2.5%, however, here's where things took a very interesting turn in 2019. The Federal Reserve decided to lower interest rates again because, as they say, there's really no reason why the expansion can't keep going. Inflation is not troublingly high. It's okay. If you look at the economy right now, there's no sector, no individual sector, that's booming and therefore might just bust. So, in other words, they lowered interest rates to boost, maintain, boost the economy and maintain growth, of which they were not seeing in this rising interest rate environment where they kept raising the cost of money. Well, now people could afford. This did exactly what you would expect. About six months later, medium house prices hit another record high, while housing inventory hit another record low. See the, see the correlation here? But now that we're seeing something similar with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates back to where they were in 2018, this could lead to another housing market slowdown with prices expected to fall. Will it be a full panic? I don't know. A chief economist and founder at Patheon Macroeconomics projected that the existing home prices will drop roughly 25% from the annual pace of 6 million set in February to 4.5 million by the end of summer, which should slow down. Summer's the hottest season, no pun intended. On top of that, he said that the housing market is in an early stage of a substantial downshift in activity, slowing down, which will trigger a steep decline in rate, the rate of increase of home prices. So it should decline the ability for people to pay more because the payments will be higher. Starting perhaps as soon as spring, part of this is backed with the recent drop in mortgage demand which slowed to its lowest point since 2019. Demand for refinancing having dropped nearly 50% from a year ago. This signals that higher interest rates are putting more pressure on buyers and as a result, they have less interest in purchasing. Rising rates also have a direct correlation with home affordability, with the median cost of monthly mortgage payments having increased $400 or 27% over the last seven months. Although, as far as what the experts believe we might see overall next year, here are five predictions that I think are worth discussing. First, mortgage rates will increase as of today's mortgage rate today, it has increased to 3.2 to 4.4%, which is now the same level as we saw in 2019, and it's no surprise that the rates will probably go a lot higher as the Federal Reserve continues raising rates for the foreseeable future, meaning either demand will begin to subside or buyers will rush to lock in those rates, those low rates, while they still can. And secondly, experts believe less competition, according to the National Association of Realtors, as they explain the combination of rising interest rates and rising home prices will push would-be buyers out of the market until sellers catch on and go, wait a minute, nobody's here to buy the house, and then they'll have to adjust the price. Well, quote, 
This may reduce competition after the summer buying season is over. That's at the same time as the others. And third, home price appreciation will slow. Now on the surface, estimates of 2022 housing market are, well, they're guesses at best. For example, CoreLogic expects housing prices to see a 6% increase throughout the next 12 months. Realtor.com predicts another 2.9% rise. And Zillow says that supply chain bottlenecks are, and years of underbuilding will keep inventory relatively low for the foreseeable future, with prices, of course, peaking at 21.6% in May before slowing back down. And fourth, expensive homes will become more affordable, but cheaper homes will become more competitive. MarketWatch was quoted that said that more listings in the upper end of home prices above $500,000 compared to a year ago, there's less people in that arena and it's softening. And it's making it easier for people to make decisions because they don't have to make hurried decisions. It's also expected that the mortgage rate rise will have some buyers being forced to shop for lower price point property, driving the competition to those less expensive neighborhoods, even higher competition, harder to get those homes. And finally, fifth, they say that the foreclosures will rise with the end of the mortgage forbearance period during the pandemic. It was assumed that home buyers would uh, were unable to make their payments would eventually default and then the property would go back to the bank. However, as a real estate professional myself, I have seen, I completely disagree with that. Even though the foreclosure rates have been increased, increasing, uh, huge, but this is the backlog of people that probably already should have been foreclosed on, right? Realty Track found that most of the activity in these are primarily vacant or abandoned properties or loans that had problems before the pandemic. They were in, already in foreclosure. Across the US, when you think about it, there's one in 6,675 homes falling into this category. So you probably don't have one on your street. If we look back historically, we could see that we're still well below the average when it comes to the foreclosures, meaning fewer people are underwater in their homes. Fewer people are going into foreclosure and more people than ever have equity from which to draw cash out of their home. But even with all of that out of the way, it still leaves the question, why does Zillow believe that the wildest home price swing still awaits us? Well, a few days ago, Zillow released an update forecast on the market. And in the current conditions, even with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, they believe the housing prices will increase 17.8% throughout, through all the way through to February of 2023. However, as far as my own thoughts about as a full-time real estate professional, buyer, manager of property, builder, developer since 2003, these predictions I think are just like I've seen over and over again, they're just predictions. For instance, back in May of 2020, basically CoreLogic, who is one of the largest data Analyst companies found that even though prices had risen four and a half percent, they thought that throughout 2021, we would see an increase of a half a percent. While Zillow also published their own predictions, which estimated the real estate values would drop, drop 2.7% by October of 2021. So you can see just how wrong they can get it. That was the uh, the big picture, even though higher interest rates do impact home affordability and other factors play into it. You got to think about things like, well, what's the local market conditions? What's the supply of new construction? What's happening with inflation? How's unemployment going? And what's the overall health of the economy? They all play a big factor on what happens in our real estate market. Usually, it trails what happens in the stock market. The issue that we have today isn't so much of one of speculation back in 2008 or no money down loans or free loans to anybody who could fog a mirror, but instead a shortage of inventory combined with a strong demand that pushes prices even higher. 
means we have a foundation for the market. People want what's out there and there's not enough of it. Also, I want to check in and make sure that I tell you this because I read this in the research and I was worried about you. People are uninsured today. They're underinsured. In the event of damage on the average, average person is uninsured by 22%. That means instead of getting $400,000 to repair your house, now you're getting $300,000. And the rest, well, it's up to you to figure out how to pay the difference. So I re recommend that if you have a home and you're a homeowner, call your insurance carrier, make sure that you have the proper coverage for today's prices. Because if it's based on a few years ago, you might be way undercovered because most of the country is. Further, and get a call, make sure you extend your dwelling coverage as well so that if you uh, have an overage in the construction of repairing it, you w it won't come out of your pocket, it'll come out of the insurance policy and it'll reflect and cover those higher things. Also, if you have any exotic cars or other cars, like I have lots of cars, make sure you have the extended coverage there because values, some of the values there might not be replaceable. So remember, that was a year ago, things have changed. But seriously, back talking about prop as far as properties go, do this if and tell your friends to make sure that they check on their insurance and make sure they have the right coverages. My own research found that two-thirds of people are underinsured. As for the near-term outlook on the stock market, apparently investors are more concerned about global growth than any other time since the great financial crisis of 2008 and have ramped up their cash holdings to a two-year high. Of course, that's also also coincides with worries about the inverted yield curve with one analyst saying the market perhaps is assuming that they can't thread the needle. It's going to be tough not to drive us into a recession. And Jerome Powell, on the other hand, said that they're keeping a close eye on the first 18 months of the Treasury rates to see a sign of a recession or which they don't see at the current moment. They're not concerned about it. They're not quite concerned about it. Yet, although even if we did see a inverted yield curve, Bank of America explains that it's not the standalone indicator of a recession as it once was with the market if the market continues. Moving higher in the long run, so in terms of what you could do, about all of this, basically, just don't be, I guess, a millennial, according to a new survey that found that managing money ranks dead last. Millennials' priority list on certain activities, which include playing with their pets and caring for houseplants. I'm not, I don't have a green thumb. I don't really manage houseplants, but I think a lot about money. They also, surfing the internet and thinking about dinner, in fact, 45% of millennials said that they don't even know how much money they have in their accounts. And four out of five responded, said that they are more likely to make an impulsive purchase. I'd be embarrassed to say that because they trust auto pay. It keeps track of all their bills and, uh, why, and why, why think about that, right? That's uh, any rate. So it's important to keep track of your bills, keep a budget, take care of your expenses, cut expenses where you can, increase your income where you can, buy some real estate uh, that is income generating real estate, but you have to be careful. M invest constantly, regardless of what happens, just keep putting something into safe investments. I think it's the best. This is not financial advice, but it's what I do. Please consider subscribing if you found this information relevant, helpful, please consider subscribing, like the video, throw a comment in the comment section. I would love to hear your thoughts. Take care. Love you guys. I'm Andrew Cartwright.